Hey guys, Vice Bomper, bring you this very exciting first look video on the War Wooden Alpha. Uh, I was very privileged to get some uh, really early access to the Alpha, so um, I've been trying out playing some uh, Frost and Hole DK, looking at the new um, hero talents and how they kind of fit into the rotation, that kind of thing. This video we're going to talk about Unholy specifically, talk about, you know, in the Alpha what has changed with Unholy, what um what's the impact of the hero talents what kind of gameplay loop are we seeing that kind of thing jumping straight into it though um in the alpha none of the actual talents have changed i think this will probably um not be the case further down the line there are a couple of things which are a bit weird with the talents where you feel like hmm is this really how it should work that makes you think that there probably will be some changes in the future. But anyway, no talent changes to report so far. However, the hero talents are in and we could test them. So have been definitely trying those out to see how they impact our rotation. If you guys remember, we have Rider of the Apocalypse and Sun Lane, which are the unholy hero talents. These will equip, this will... Um, uh, unlock as you level from uh, 70 to 80 once you've got 80 you will have all of them unlocked like this and the real choice is just like how you choose the um, kind of choice node here um my general vibe is that ride of apocalypse feels very much passive it's very cool don't not gonna lie right but uh, it doesn't have much of an impact in rotation so in line however have some really interesting aspects, which I'm not sure I intended, but we're going to talk about exactly what I think is the correct gameplay loop here, which is really, really different from what we currently do. Anyway, Rider Apocalypse, let's just uh, recap quickly what it is. Uh, the, the main kind of ability is that you summon these um, horsemen that come and fight with you. Um, they use lots of abilities that then you interact with, giving you some strength, giving damage, that kind of thing. Overall, though, just really quite passive. It feeds into our cooldown windows because when you use army, you summon four of them. And then you can extend their duration with this talent that when you spend ruling power, you extend them. And this all fits really nicely into how Unholy has played in Dragonflight because army we use gargoyle and then we just spend lots of ruling power and that's kind of how it feeds into it you can see i have some gameplay running here in the background it kind of has little impact generally i'd say uh, one interesting aspect is this unholy blight cooldown reduction it means that you never press needs to press outbreak i did think about well if we have that cooldown reduction maybe we can run ebon fever and get some extra value there. However, it's really difficult to pick up both on Hall of Blight and Ebbe Fever, but while running all our other single target abilities. So, not 100% sure exactly what we're going to do about that. General vibe though, I would have loved to try out this on a paler horse, but the thing is that um, on the Alpha, I can't actually learn Acro Step Charger, so I'm not too sure how that's going to work. Uh, I could mount up, mount up in combat, but as soon as I hit abilities, they uh, effectively just uh, dismounted me. So, <laughs> who knows? It looks like the uh, Pact of Apocalypse, we talked about that previously, is that the um, um, the, uh, the horsemen you summon, they um, help you take damage. And that seems to stack, so when you have all of them up, that's 20% damage reduction, which is really strong. Actually, so hang on, how much actual HP do they have? So, okay, they have more HP than you have. So I would expect when you have four of them, 5% of your damage, you have to take loads of damage for that to ever kill them. So I don't think that's actually going to be an issue. But you can see up here, we have Pact of Apocalypse times four. That kind of um, stacks up over time. Okay, um, not much else to it than this I'd say you obviously have this kind of necrotic plague interaction so um, when you have the uh, what's his name there we go white main up you get a ne necrotic plague like ability which um, stacks up and then debuffs everyone around them that kind of thing which is um, I don't know, fun and interesting all right moving on to um, Sun Lane right so What's this talent tree about? It's much more disease focused for sure. The the main ability here is Vampiric Strike, which um, has a random chance of um, proccing when you 
uh, use deck call and epidemic. That's gonna work. That's what we're gonna use as unholy. But also, um, would you press dark transformation? This happens every single time. So when you press dark, dark transformation, your skirt strike or uh, clone shadow is gonna transform into vampiric strike. There are a couple of very good synergies in these three. Um, we have this inflict some sorrow, which is like the primary interesting part here. Um, so the passive is so vampiric strike. When damage on an enemy affected by Vermin Plague or Blood Plague consumes the disease to deal 200% of the remaining damage to the target. This can deal an insane amount of damage. Like, I um, I managed to get a crit, which was around 400k. For reference, like, hitting just naked Clone Shadows is currently uh, 15k. Okay? It can be insane. I'll, I'll talk about exactly how that synergy works, but you can stack that up to an insane amount. And I can imagine, like, in PvP... Getting a 400k uh, hit like that would be insane. Anyway, we also have the second thing here. While Giftus and Lane is active, uh, that's essentially when you press Dark Transformation, you have Giftus and Lane. Vampiric Strike not only consumes the disease, instead extends the duration and deals 20% of the remaining damage. This will uh, bring you into a really strong feedback loop during Dark Transformation. Essentially, what happens if that you press Dark Transformation, you start, you apply your dots, and then you spam your. Uh, skirt strike or clone shadows that will then add three seconds every time you uh, spam it so it's going to increase duration of your dots and then you're going to get 20 percent of that total dot duration every single hit this means that when you run a disease focused uh, talent build like i'm going to show you how it's done uh, it means that you essentially you start out with a dot with like 15 seconds but then you can stack it up to 40 seconds and every single time you hit skirt strike during dot transformation it deals, you know, more than a, um, I think it's more than a Clone Shadow's worth just from that dot. And then when Dark Transformation finishes, you get a proc and then you get 200% of the remaining damage. That's when you can get those 400k crits, right? So that's the the strong synergy here. Um, outside of this, the whole tree is about like maintaining this uh, dot. So um, you have... Uh, uh, gift of Saint Line. No, sorry. The uh, Vampiric. Oh, there we go. Essence of the Blood Queen gives you a haste buff, and you can effectively keep that at seven stacks forever. But you need to be a bit lucky. So the thing is that you obviously you press Dark Transformation, you spam your Skirt Track slash Clone Shadows. You have to get at least one natural proc in between each Dark Transformation window for it to overlap. So it's a bit. You need to be a bit lucky. It's a bit hard to tell currently because there's no indicator of when you actually get a proc. But the gameplay is essentially hit your Dark Transformation, you spam the Skirt Strike, you go out of it, you do your normal rotation, hope you get a proc. That refreshes your um, Essence of Blood Queen and then that keeps you going until the next Dark Transformation and then you go over again. Okay. And you can see I have gameplay playing in the background. Um, the, the, the build I'm running here picks up both uh, Ebon Fever and Playbringer. And this is so, Ebon Fever is quite interesting because it means that your dot deals 15% more damage in half the duration, but that actually increases the value of this three second extension window. So imagine, so three seconds worth of your own plague when you have Ebon Fever going is much more than three seconds without Ebon Fever. So you apply your dot, you use Unholy Blight to stack up the get that full pandemic window and then you start spamming your Skirt Strike. You can go up to 40 seconds and then you, every single Skirt Strike hit is just going to deal insane damage. You have Playbring going as well, that synergizes. And then you exit your window and you get a Lucky Proc and you just get insane crits. I think it's a bit degenerative here because uh, this doesn't feed into our kit at all. Like other talents have really strong anti-synergy. Like Eternal Agony, right? That wants you to spend death calls when your dark transformation active. But with this build, right, you're just going to spam call Skirt Strike. And you will have the runes for it because uh, there's also this uh, Visceral Regeneration. That means that, right, so you have 3% chance per stack of S and the Blood Queen to refund the rune. You will have 7 stacks, right, that's 21 and then you have to double that during your Dark Transformation. So that's 42% chance of refunding a rune. So there's like infinite runes. You have no problem at all just spamming Skirt Strike. 
I don't know. I think it's quite fun to have this different uh, DPS loop, but I also think it's a bit weird because, um, yeah, I'm not sure that's the kind of rotation we want. Anyway, for the build, uh, you go into Unhold of Blight, you pick up your uh, Ebon Fever. You have to go Pestilence because Eternal Agony is just useless. You do your Super Strain. That's another thing, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's not very... Um, consistent with what counts as a disease so that three second duration actually only works on blood plague and vernal plague and not frost fever and it means that this infliction of sorrow doing that extra damage only comes from blood plague and vernal plague not from frost fever so who knows what that's about but oh well um i'm not too sure exactly what build you run here but you probably go something like uh, Build into your death calls because this also increases your death call damage quite a lot. But you wouldn't run anything uh, related to your pets because uh, you know gargle. You won't have time to use any renew power to um, pump that up. You won't. Yeah, it's not about that essentially. Also, you want to use death and casing as I've just built. Pop it down when you're outside the dark transformation window. Try and fish for those procs because it. it getting a proc outside dt both for the um, extension of the buff but also for getting that huge damage proc like as soon if you can get really close after dt window finishes you'll just get insane value because you have like a 43 second duration uh it has play bringer it has ebon fever all that 200 percent worth that and you get just a lot of damage right Right, look, let's talk about uh, AUE gameplay here. So, um, obviously, so both trees I've talked primarily from a raid point of view, as in what's our single target build, how does that impact our single target DPS. Um, for AOE, I think, again, St. Lane is by far the most impactful because um, it, I think, it's hard to tell, right, when you, when you don't have details, whatever. I think it's going to work really well in an AOE scenario. So... Vampiric Strike works in AoE with Definite K. Okay? So, essentially, just as we did in Single Target, where we press Dark Transformation, Spam Skirt Strike, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to press Dark Transformation, and then Definite K, and then Spam Skirt Strike. And that's going to stack up the dots on all targets hit by those Skirt Strikes. We can just have a quick look at what that looks like here. So, um, go to my target, and Hollow Blight, Dark Transformation, I pop them on Definite K, and then we'll start spamming. You can see this target here doesn't get hit by my um, Gut Strike. So it actually doesn't see its um, Burn Plague duration go up. All of these will stack up their uh, durations. And then essentially, once we exit the window, we want to consume, ideally, the dot on all targets. Again, it's hard for me to tell here because I don't... Uh, I can't see when it procs. Which means that it's very difficult to kind of time it. I'm sure that like in, you can see here, I didn't get a proc at all, unfortunately. But if you can go again, same thing, pop that down and then just start spamming. Is that getting hit actually? I think it sometimes gets hit for some weird, weird reason. We can tell the game gameplay that we pair. And I'm sure, you know, we will have some kind of indicator for when it procs. So you use Epidemic, you see a proc, you pop down Definite K, and then just consume all the diseases. There we go. And let's have a look at what how much damage that dealt. Oh no, I actually messed that up a little bit. There we go. So you got 120k, 120k, 180k. It's a lot of damage coming into that kind of uh, uh, synergy and big cooldown window. When it comes to uh, Rider, there isn't really anything that synergizes that well in AoE. Obviously, the, the the horsemen themselves, they do have some AoE effects. Like Mogran, he does definitely K, so you get more uptime when you're definitely K. But that's really kind of it. <laughs> Well, we have this uh, White Man's Famine, which is an AoE thing, but that's also going to be quite passive because he's going to apply to one target and then it's just going to spread to everyone 
and you're going to get lots of damage when you get that proc. But again, I wouldn't expect there to be that much synergy. Okay, so a bit of rambling. It's probably, you know, trying out, seeing the rotation, that kind of thing. Uh, overall, I'm quite excited to see where this goes. This really doesn't feel like the uh, final version of any of the talent trees. Maybe the uh, the horseman, because that's so passive that there's not much to do about it. But San Lane, that feedback loop where we just spam skirt strike, not too sure if that's going to uh, survive for that long. Anyway, let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this. What are your expectations? What's your vision for the Unholy DK in the War Within? What do you think about the hero talents? How does it look like when you can see it in actual play? That kind of thing. Upvote, downvote, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.